I'd never heard of this film until I was on YouTube and I saw an old, old interview with its director, Paul Schrader, where he was promoting it. As a filmmaker, Schrader is probably most famous for writing Taxi Driver, but he also directed a lot of other great films, like one of my all-time favorites, First Reformed. Who can know the mind of God? And although a lot of his films take place in very different settings, culturally, socioeconomically, and otherwise, there is an undeniably unifying thread that you can trace through most of his work, and it comes in the form of a male protagonist tormented by intense alienation. This character is often seeking something similar to redemption, and often through the form of something like martyrdom or self-sacrifice. And Mishima Life in Four Chapters is truly no different. The film is essentially a biopic of the infamous Japanese writer Yukio Mishima, who at the height of his fame committed seppuku, suicide by samurai sword, on live TV after using his private army to take over a military base in 1970. I think it would be a difficult film to go in watching blind, as it's a narrative that truly doesn't hold your hand. It's limited in the amount of context and exposition it provides, and it regularly interchanges between between the dramatization of Mishima's own life and the dramatization of his fiction work. But to be honest, I think that was the perfect structural choice. As from what I know, Mishima was a functioning schizophrenic who saw no boundaries between reality and the fictitious world he created, having essentially performed as one of his own characters for the last decade or more of his own life. The scenario of his death was even something he performed himself in several films he made. The narration of the film is made up of Mishima's poetic writings, which helps you to understand the depth of his talent as a writer, for someone like me who's never read his work, but also the depth of his narcissism, a narcissism that served as a potent undertone to his life, fueling his art whilst darkening his existence. <laughs> それ As a writer, it seems like he really did spill all his dark and strange inner tensions onto the page through his fiction. And so this weaving in of theatrical dramatizations of his work amongst the reality really does assemble an introspective portrait of him not merely as an artist or a public figure, but a profoundly complex human being. Mishima's life's work was an elaborate tapestry, intricately weaving together art, theater, performance, and reality. And so this intertwined structural approach felt not just appropriate, but essential. There is admittedly a delicate line to toe in biographical filmmaking between stylization and authenticity, but I think Schrader navigates this terrain well. The film exudes a compelling expressive resonance while still somehow feeling very dialed back at times and dignified. That being said, I do think it is important to take a critical lens on works which engage with such severe subjects, and with Schrader's filmography broadly, not just here but in other films, I might question in his messaging. What is it telling the audience when such toxic, violent actions are depicted with a degree of dignity? And I'm not saying I necessarily wholeheartedly agree with this characterization, but I think it is important to pose the question, especially since, much like in the life of Mishima, Schrader's own art arguably bled into reality through several cases of attempted presidential assassins citing Taxi Driver as their inspiration. 
Personally, I don't believe the taxi driver was responsible in these cases, but what's difficult is that we can never really know for sure. We can never really know whether or not these people would have undertaken these violent acts if they had not consumed the film. An argument to the contrary though would be that individuals on the fence of committing such acts might not actually be influenced to undertake them by consuming such media, but rather the opposite, that this kind of art can serve as a surrogate for the experience and actually quell the motivation to execute the acts for real. The question remains though, is the filmmaker responsible for problematic interpretations and behaviors in response to their film? Personally, I think it depends. Films are obviously so diverse and different, and people are of course so varied and unfortunately stupid, and so I don't think there is any other answer here than the fact that it should be taken on a case-by-case -case basis. And in the case of Schrader's Mishima, considering that most people don't have private armies willing to support them in a violent military coup, I would say that it's probably fine.